Hello everyone. I'd like to give a warm welcome to everyone out there. And um, my name is Renee and I am doing health videos for you on Renee's Health Corner. And I want you to know that God cares about you and your health. In 2022, just about everywhere you look, sickness and disease is on the rise. In America, over 4,000 times a day, someone has a heart attack and a new diabetic is discovered every 50 seconds. And one out of four people have cancer. That's 25% of the American population. And there's also a rise in many other diseases like strokes, gastrointestinal problems, lung conditions, lupus, multiple sclerosis. And the question is, why? Many people believe God is to blame, but is that really the case? In 3 John 2 in the Bible, we're told that God wants us to prosper and to be in health. So if God wants us to be in health, why is disease more rampant now than ever before? Well, anyway, um, we're going to realize and find out some things today. I'm going to be talking about fiber. And remember all the information that I share um, is supported by medical research or medical science or the Bible or the spirit of prophecy, most important of all, those last two. Now we're told in the Bible in Proverbs 26 two that the curse causeless shall not come. And then in Job 29, 16, we're told the cause which I knew not, I searched out. And 1 Corinthians 10, 3 says, whether therefore, 10, 31, I'm sorry, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Then, and I'm going to give you a few quotes from Spirit of Prophecy and uh, Council on Diet and Foods, page 406, paragraph 4 says, education should be given on proper diet. In Ministry of Healing, page 127, this is one of my favorite quotes. Quotes, it says, disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. Unhealthful conditions should be changed and wrong habits corrected. Then nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. Pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. Every person should have a knowledge of nature's remedial agencies and how to apply them. It is essential both to understand the principles involved in the treatment of the sick and to have a practical training that will enable one rightly to use this knowledge. So we need to educate ourselves, we're told too, in CG 361, not only to live in harmony with the laws of health, but to teach others a better way. And that is my goal by doing these videos, is to teach you a better way. We're also told to become more intelligent in regard to the laws of life. That's 11MR, page 187. And we're all told in Ministry of Healing, page 128, is the duty of every person for his own sake and for the sake of humanity to inform himself in regard to the laws of life and to conscientiously obey them. You know, many people are sick out of ignorance. They don't really know, you know, that they shouldn't eat this or shouldn't do these things and they do them and they don't know any better. But once we find out, then it's up to us to obey and, and change and implement the things we learn into our lives so we can be healthier. We're told in KC, you are to apply the laws of life and health to your own case. In violating the laws of health, you misrepresent your maker. So who's our maker? God is our maker. And then we're told on councils on diet and foods, uh, education should be given on proper diet. And 7T137 says true religion and the laws of health go hand in hand. It is impossible to work for the salvation of men and women without presenting to them the need of breaking away sinful gratifications, which destroy health, debase the soul, and prevent divine truth from impressing the mind. Did you hear that? If we do not obey the laws of health, it can prevent divine truth from impressing our minds. Wow, I don't want that to happen to you. So anyway, I'm, like I said, I'm going to talk about fiber today and how important it is, what foods are high in fiber, what problems result from having a lack of fiber in your diet. And in the Bible, in Isaiah 55, 2, we're told to eat that which is good. 
And the word good here means that which is best. So according to the Bible, God wants us to eat foods that are best for health and healing. He wants us to eat foods that promote our health and healing. Now, what is fiber? Well, the word fiber comes from the Latin word fibra, meaning fiber, thread, string, filament, and trails. Dietary fiber means nutrients in the diet that are not digested by gastrointestinal enzymes. Fiber is also known as roughage. It is the indigestible part of plant foods that pushes through our digestive tract, absorbing water along the way and making bowel movements easy. Now, there's two different kinds of fiber. There's soluble fiber, and that those that dissolve in water, and there's insoluble fiber, and it's those that don't dissolve in water. Both types of fiber are present in all plant foods, but rarely in equal proportions. Now, soluble fiber, like uh, that found in cucumbers, blueberries, beans, nuts, dissolves into a gel-like texture, helping to slow down your digestion. This helps you to feel full longer, and it's one reason why fiber helps with weight control. Then there's insoluble fiber, and that absorbs and holds water from four to six times its own volume. It causes a sense of fullness um, to prevent from overeating. It has many other functions as well, like moving bulk through the digestive tract and con uh, controlling our pH, our acidity levels in our intestines. Now the benefits of insoluble fiber, it promotes regular bowel movements, prevents constipation, speeds up the elimination of toxic, uh, toxic waste um, through the colon, and it keeps an optimal pH in the intestines um, and prevents microbes from producing substances which can lead to um, cholesterol cancer. Now there's some health benefits to fiber too. There's no shortage of research showing how fiber can boost your health and some of its top poten uh, potential benefits include blood sugar control. Soluble fiber can help slow your body's breakdown of carbohydrates and the absorption of sugar helping with blood sugar control. Heart health, an inverse association has been found between fiber intake and heart attack and research shows that those eating a high fiber diet have a 40% a lower risk of heart disease. Wow, that's amazing. Stroke, researchers have found that for every seven grams, more fiber you consume on a daily basis, your stroke risk is decreased by 7%. Weight loss and management, fiber increases feeling of fullness, as I mentioned earlier. Skin health, fiber is great for your skin, particularly psyllium husk can help move yeast and fungus out of your body, preventing them from being excreted through your skin where they can trigger acne or rashes. Uh, diverticulitis, Dietary fiber, especially insoluble, may reduce your risk of this. It's an infl inflammation of polyps in your intestine. Hemorrhoids, a high fiber diet can lower your risk of hemorrhoids. Uh, I, irritable bowel sy syndrome, better, you know, mainly known as IBS, fiber can provide relief from that. Gallstones and kidney stones, a high fiber diet can reduce the risk of having these stones because of its ability to help regulate the blood sugar. Now the functions <clears throat> uh, and benefits of soluble fiber uh, are it's slow down digestion, help absorb carbohydrates, prevent a quick rise in your blood sugar levels, binds with fatty acids, slows down the time it takes to empty your stomach, and slows down the rate of sugar absorption by the body. It also attaches itself to cholesterol and other byproducts of fat digestion and pulls them out of the body. Thereby, it lowers the LDL cholesterol levels. Now, where is fiber found anyway? Well, it's in fruit, it's in vegetables, it's in nuts, grains, and seeds, and beans, and legumes. And um, now I'm gonna tell you about some diseases that related to a uh, low fiber diet. You don't want a low fiber diet, you want a high fiber diet. Uh, you can get appendicitis, breast cancer, colon cancer, constipation, uh, coronary artery disease, diabetes, diverticulitis, diverticulosis, heart disease, high ideal hernia, high cholesterol levels, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, neuro neurological disorders, obesity, osteoporosis, peptic ulcers, prostate cancer, varicose vein disorders, and many others. <clears throat> 
Some of the, you know, several of these diseases are colon problems too, and that is appendicitis, constipation, diverticulitis, IBS, and peptic ulcers. Were you aware that the majority of your immune system is located in your colon? 70% to be exact. That's right. Therefore, a low fiber diet has a major impact on your immune system. So infectious diseases um, related to the immune system can result as well. You are also more prone to colds and flus when you have a low fiber diet. Now, how much fiber is necessary for good health? Well, 25 to 30 grams is the recommended daily amount. For a diabetic, 50 grams minimum is recommended. Now, the average American daily intake of fiber is only about 14 grams a day. This definitely accounts for a significant number of health issues that Americans are faced with. The recommended daily amount, like I said, is 25 to 30 grams, and it does vary depending on the sex and your age. Now, for children, and children ages one through three, they only need about 19 grams, and children four through eight, about 21 grams. And now females are different than males. For females, girls ages nine through 18, they need 26 grams, 19 through 50 need 25 grams, and women 51 and older only need about 21 grams. Pregnant women need 28 grams, and women who are breastfeeding need 29 grams. Now for the males, 9 to 13 years of age, they need 31 grams, and 14 to 49 need 35 grams, and 50 and older need 38 grams. So you see, men need more fiber than women do. Now the following that I'm going to share with you is a list of food items and their portion sizes that contain at least 10 grams of fiber. This list will allow you to get an idea of how much fiber you're getting each day. You can half the portion sizes, but you need to half the fiber amount as well. So example, if you pick three items from the list or six of the items and only consume half of what the portion is, then you've only consumed 30 grams a day. Another thing you can do to make sure you're getting an adequate amount of fiber every day is to make sure you get a little of each fruit, vegetable, nuts, grains, seeds, and legumes. Every day by switching it up day to day, you can make sure you have a, um, that it's never boring because you want a variety. Nobody wants to eat the same thing every day. So if I have pumpkin seeds today, tomorrow I might have chia, the next day flax seeds, the next day sesame seeds, the next day sunflower seeds, and switch it up so you're not eating the same thing. Also, to make sure you're getting uh, enough variety and to make it a little bit more fun, include different colors. You want red, blue, yellow, orange, you know, uh, green and white in your meal planning. Now, here's that list of foods that contain 10 grams of fiber. Almonds, one eighth of a cup or two tablespoons. Apples, three apples a day. So if you eat one apple, you have about 3.3 grams of fiber. Apricots, one cup of dried. Beans, one cup. If you eat a half a cup, then you have five grams. Baked potato with the skin. Now I'm referring to a plain baked potato alone before you add anything to it, uh, a large one. Bananas, three medium. If you eat only one, you're getting 3.3 grams of fiber again. Broccoli, um, one large head. Most people don't consume a whole head, of course, at one meal, but you can probably eat maybe about a 10th of that head, depending on how big it is and that would be about one gram of fiber. But when you eat a little of this and a little of that, of uh, foods containing fiber, you can get the 25 to 30 grams you need. Cabbage, one medium head. Carrots, three carrots. One large head of cauliflower. Chia seeds, two tablespoons. Hummus dip, three fourths of a cup. Uh, a third a cup of dried figs. Um, Flaxseed, ground. Now one cup, so two tablespoons would be an eighth of a cup. So one eighth of 10 is 1.25% of grams of fiber. So it's not a lot, but still, like I said, it all adds up. Grapes, 40 grapes. Lentils, two cups cooked. So a fourth cup would be 2.5 grams, but easily people could eat at least a cup of lentils. So you would get at least five there. Anyway, a cup of oats, uh, three oranges, um, six peaches, a cup of peanuts, or a fourth a cup is 2.5 grams. Two pears, one pear would be five grams of fiber. A cup of peas, a cup of prunes, sunflower seeds, a half a cup of wheat bran, whole grain bread, uh, five slices. Uh, homemade would be three slices. 
So you're better off making your own bread, as you can see. Now remember, these are just examples. Fiber can be found in all your fruits, all your vegetables, all your nuts, your grains, your seeds, your legumes. And be sure to add each and every day, and you won't be, I mean, be sure to eat from each of those categories every day, and you won't be lacking your fiber. Now, if you're uncertain as to how you're gonna get more fiber in your diet, here's some creative ways um, at mealtime what you can do. You can add flax seeds, chia seeds, seeds or nuts to like your salad, super cereal. You can keep fresh and frozen fruit to add to a cereal or, or you can cook your vegetables um, and add them to your salad. Now, I like to eat fruit. I love fruit. Every day I eat at least three pieces of fruit with my fruit meal because I love it. So I might have a plum and I might have a kiwi and I might have um, a banana, let's say, or I might have an orange and a, uh, some grapes and um, um, some blueberries, you know. Switch it up. You don't eat the same thing every day. And choose whole grains. Eat a whole grain cereal with a minimum of four grams of fiber. Don't eat that garbage in the grocery store that's just full of sugar. And beans and peas go with your vegetable meal, so you can include them in your diet. And choose breads and pasta made from whole grains only. Don't eat the white because there's not hardly any fiber in it, and that stuff's not good for you anyway. Be sure to read your labels. If it says enriched, it's not a whole grain. It means they removed important parts and then added minerals back. You don't want that. You want the whole grain. And try to eat a salad, like we have an orange or, or, or a yellow vegetable. Put some um, sweet potato, eat that on the side, or you can have some yellow carrots with it. And, you know, like I said, try to eat at least three three pieces of fruit every day. And um, the other thing that I want to tell you about fiber is that um, if you're eating meat and cheese and dairy products, they don't contain any fiber, zero zilch zip. So you're getting nothing from that. So increase your fiber slowly. You don't have to add it all at one time. Um, try adding a couple grams every day until your required amount is reached. If you add it too quickly, some people can get gas or bloating or diarrhea. So you know your body, you have to experiment and see what happens. And be sure to drink enough water every day. So when you add your needed fiber to your diet, um, you can get constipated and you don't want that. Remember the rule of thumb for water is half your weight in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you need 75 ounces of water every single day plus 16 ounces the first hour you're awake to replace what you've lost while you slept. So anyway, you don't drink it all at one time either. You divide it up by the number of hours you're awake for the day. You should be awake 16 hours, sleeping eight, and you don't want to uh, drink, um, you forget the first hour because you're drinking that 16 ounces the first hour you're awake, and you don't want to drink an hour before bed. So that leaves 14 hours. So divide 14 into um, your ounces of water and that's how much you drink every water and it's usually like way under a cup and you don't want to drink it all at once just take a sip every 15 minutes and you can drink that water very easily and it's not overwhelming when I tell people this they're like wow that's really easy I didn't think I could do it but they do also some intestinal disorders require low fiber diets during acute flare-ups and that's um, intestinal inflammation Crohn's disease and diverticulitis. For these diseases, a low fiber diet is followed, but just for a short time. A high fiber diet is normally resumed once the symptoms have subsided. And to get rid of those symptoms, you just obey the laws of health. Now, if you'd like to do more uh, research on fiber, you can do that on Google. And there's a lot of information out there regarding this subject. Now, here's some tips for getting some more fiber in your diet. Uh, like I said, you can choose a high fiber breakfast cereal um, that has five or more grams per serving. Now, cereals that are whole grain, bran, or fiber in the name are usually pretty good ones. Or add a few tablespoons of wheat bran to your cereal. That helps too. Um, like I said, switch to whole grains. Don't eat white pasta, white rice, white this, white that. White stuff is not good. Consume at least half of all your grains as whole grains. And look for breads if you don't make your own, what's better if you do. That's list whole wheat and whole wheat flour, other whole grains as the first ingredient. And 
that's what you want to do is read those labels and make sure it has at least two grams of fiber per serving. Now, you can eat wild rice too as uh, barley, whole wheat pasta, bulgur wheat. Uh, for baked goods, substitute whole grain flour for half or all the white flour, depending on what you're making. And try adding some crushed bran cereal or unprocessed wheat bran or uncooked oatmeal to muffins and cakes and cookies. Use legumes and beans and peas and lentils. They're all excellent for fiber. Add kidney beans to your soup or to your green salad. Make nachos with refried beans and lots of fresh veggies or whole wheat organic tortilla chips and, and salsa. Make your own salsa. I make my own salsa. So anyway, eat more fruits and vegetables because they're rich in fiber as well as vitamins and minerals. And uh, here's one more quote that I'm going to read uh, from Councils on Health. It says, thousands need and would gladly receive instruction concerning the simple methods of treating the sick methods that are taking the place of the use of poisonous drugs. There is great need of instruction in regard to dietetic, dietetic reform. Wrong habits of eating and the use of unhealthful food are in no small degree responsible for the intemperance and crime and wretchedness that curse the world. Wow. I highly recommend a book. Um, called Health Power was written by Dr. Hans Diehl, who was known for the CHIP program. Uh, his books have over 2 million copies in 17 languages in circulation. It covers the subject that I talked about today and many other topics that uh, I will and have talked about. And it also includes the natural laws that I've talked about. Um, and if you'd like to purchase that, you can just look it up on Amazon or do a Google search. It's a really good book. I have it. It also tells you great information in there, like um, if you're a man or woman and what your body frame is and how much you should weigh. And I'm going to give you a little uh, hint. If you measure your wrist, you know, right around your wrist with a tape measure, and if it's under six inches, you're a small frame. If you're six inches and above up to seven inches, you're medium. And if you're seven inches or higher, you're large frame. So that book tells you, according to your frame size and your sex, uh, how much you should weigh. And it goes by your height too. So you look up your height and find out what your wrist is. You know, I'm a medium. I can, I can touch my, uh, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. I can touch my finger and my thumb together. I'm exactly six inches. So. I, I qualify for medium because it's under six for the small. So anyway, you can look that up and see what you're supposed to weigh and, and work towards that goal if you're if you're overweight and get rid of some of those extra pounds. Well, you know, that's our time for today. I hope that what you've heard on here will be a blessing to you and to your family and your friends. And until we meet again, may the good Lord bless and keep you throughout um, the new week and the rest of the time. And remember, God loves you and he wants you to be in health. So eat that which is good and obey the laws of health. God bless you until we meet again. Bye-bye.